morning. And again, yeah, there we are. Good morning. Good morning. One of the ways I like to start worship is reminding us who we are as the body of Christ and the priesthood of believers. So uh, I'm going to try to teach you as we go along. I'll say, good morning, church. And then we'll all say together, we are the body of Christ and priesthood of believers. Okay? I'll let you think about that for a little bit. <laughs> right. Well, welcome. And just a, one announcement, and that is that the annual meeting got moved from not this coming Sunday, but the 20th of October. So two weeks from today will be the annual meeting. So let's begin our worship with music.
as you're able, we'd ask that you please rise and join with us as we sing My Lighthouse. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea oh, You are the peace in my troubled sea confession of forgiveness I stand at the font because at our baptism this is our promise in baptism Jesus says I love you forever and I will forgive you forever so blessed be the Holy Trinity one God the strength of our ancestors the host of this meal the builder of the city that is to come amen if we have died with Christ, promises we will also live with Christ. Let us confess our sin to one another and to the one who is faithful. God our helper, we confess the many ways we failed to live as your disciples. We have not finished what we began. 
We have feasted with friends that ignored strangers. We have been captivated by our possessions. Lift our burdens, gracious God. Refresh our hearts and forgive our sin. Raise us to the new life you have chosen for us. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. There is rejoicing in heaven when sinners turn around. Put your trust in these promises. God will never leave you or forsake you. You who were lost have been found. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. So rejoice with the angels at this good news. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. invite the children forward come gather around the font with me here so just stand around the baptismal font so come join me good morning welcome everybody so yeah so yeah I'm kind of curious 
What do you see here? I want to think about what are the things we use as part of baptism. Okay, so here's the baptismal font. And how about、um, let's not touch, okay? Just in case we don't we don't want to knock anything over. That's it. It's pretty stable here, but we'll just not touch anything. So what do you notice? So here's this is called the font, okay? And here's where we pour the water for the the baptism. Okay, at the font. What else do you see here on the the table and standing here? So, what do you think's in here? Water. water. Yeah. Can you do baptism without water? No. It's the water and the words baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's part of that. Okay. Somebody said you saw a candle here. Okay. So there's this smaller candle, and then there's this large candle here. So. This is sometimes、uh, used as an Easter candle, and、uh, it's the、uh, represents Jesus being present with us as the light of the world. So Jesus, you know how light gives you. When you go into a dark room, what do you want right away? Light, right? And what does light do for you? Yeah, without light you can't see. So that's the idea with Jesus: is he helps us see where to go in life. All right. And then there's a candle here, and also a candle holder that's、uh, made by hand by members of the congregation. That's given to the one being baptized. And this is a, a remembrance then of、uh, one's baptism. So in baptism, Jesus is. Uh, says a lot of things to us, but one of the things he says is,、uh, "I love you." Okay, it, that Jesus says, "I love you." So、uh, God is saying, "I love you." So what I'd like you to do to remember that is, we use the sign of the cross as a way of remembering what Jesus has done for us. What I'd like you to do is right now make the sign of the cross. All right. And say God loves me. Would you do that? Everybody in the church right now, okay? We'll all do that together. So make the sign of the cross and say God loves me. So God loves me. All right. Now I'd like you to bless other people with that. So go back to your family, and you can stay there when you get there. But go tell somebody else. Make the sign of the cross on their forehead and say God loves you. Okay. Thank you. So, and congregation, you could do that to each other right now. All right, turn to others around you. Sign of the cross. God loves you. And one more phrase: You are God's child. Everyone, you are God's child. Amen. The first reading、uh, from the book of Prophet Habakkuk, chapter one, verses one through four, and chapters two, verses one through four. The oracle that Habakkuk saw: O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen, or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me; strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous; therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watchpost and station myself at the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me, and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, "Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is a tarry; wait for it. It will surely come; it will not delay." Look at the proud; their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by faith. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from the Apostle Paul's second letter to Timothy,、uh, chapter one, verses one through fourteen. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake and promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from the God and Father. Christ Jesus, our Lord, I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day, recalling your tears, 
I long to see you so that I might be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I'm sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is written within you through the laying of my hands. For God did not give a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony of our Lord or me, his prisoner, but join me with suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I, am, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me, the faith and the love of that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink. Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the gift of your word, the gift of your son, Jesus. At times, Lord, you say things that confuse us or we wonder about. Help us always look for your compassion and grace, which underpins every word that you have for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Lord, increase our faith. Help us, Lord, give us hope. Well, you can sure understand why the disciples would be asking things like this. Think of what Jesus has been asking of them. To give away their possessions? To forgive those who wrong you countless times? To take up your cross and follow Jesus? And more. So no wonder then, they ask for more faith. They feel inadequate to the tasks around them, insufficient to the challenges, unable to imagine accomplishing any of what Jesus is asking of them. That probably describes how we feel if we've been paying attention to the news with shootings, stabbings, injustice, hacking, government a mess, and more. There's also all the challenges in pastors and staff here at Calvary. And then there's our daily lives. We all have challenges and difficulties. We face those, be they great or small. Family, work, health, and more. So some of us feel like we need more faith just to get through let alone to make a difference. In the gospel today, something interesting happens. 
When the disciples recognize their need and they ask Jesus for help, for more faith, you'd think Jesus would both welcome and grant their request, but he doesn't. Instead, it's almost like he's scolding them. If you had even a speck of faith, he begins, implying that they actually don't have faith, even the size of a mustard seed. What kind of way is that to, dis to uh, respond to the disciples' earnest and even heartfelt desire? What if the question the disciples ask isn't only earnest and heartfelt, but it's also problematic, even a little wrong-headed? Maybe then Jesus' sharp response was just what they needed. Maybe just what we need to orient them to the miraculous presence of God all around them and the totally sufficient faith that they already have. Here's the thing. Servants aren't invited to the table with the landowner. They eat when, the, uh, they eat when their work is done. Nor do they deserve great thanks simply for doing their job. They just do it. That's more what faith looks like. Faith, perhaps, is simply the willingness to do what needs to be done. Faith is not, in other words, some kind of scarce resource that needs to be saved, spent, added to. Faith isn't always heroic. Faith instead is usually simply and humbly doing what needs to be done, big or small, great or commonplace, just because it needs doing. Now, this isn't the first time that Jesus has hinted at this. By now, in Luke's gospel, Jesus has already named several people faithful. A woman's desperate confidence that if she only touches him, she will be healed. A Roman military officer, a centurion, his concern for a sick servant. And a woman's gratitude for being forgiven. And soon, coming in Luke's gospel, Jesus will also call faithful a Samaritan leper who returns to thank Jesus for healing. And then there'll be the plea of a blind beggar for sight. It seems surprising to us that Jesus challenges the disciples' perception about faith by pointing them to simple hard work and service of a servant performing one's duties. Faith is not found in the mighty acts of heaven, but in the ordinary and everyday acts of doing what needs to be done, responding to the needs around us and caring for the people who come our way each day. Do you hear what Jesus is saying? Jesus is calling faithful the simple, unnoticed things you do every week. Things like showing up for work and doing a good job, listening when somebody needs to talk, getting the kids off to school, sitting with someone in the cafeteria who looks like they need a friend, volunteering at a clothing ministry, voting even if the field of candidates seems discouraging, Balancing the books for your business or community group. Writing a thank you note to someone who has done a kindness. Cooking supper. Praying for a neighbor who's having a hard time. Spending a little time reading God's word and having devotions. Including someone who's been left out. Serving someone with an unexpected act of kindness. Bringing a child to baptism. The list could go on and on and on, and that's the point. None of these is a big deal, and yet it's just these kinds of acts that occupy so much of our time. Have you ever thought of these acts as acts of faith? Somehow, an act of faith seems like it needs to be significant or costly, 
or even extravagant to deserve God's attention. And that perception, misperception is not anything new. Martin Luther, who was writing 500 years ago, he once even praised a father changing diapers. Luther emphasized father because that was so extremely rare and probably considered unbecoming at the time. So here's what Luther wrote. When a father goes ahead and washes diapers or performs some other menial task for his child and someone ridicules him as an effeminate fool, God with all his angels and creatures is smiling. You might wonder what difference such small things make in light of the major challenges and problems in front of us? Well, let's think about that for a moment. I'd like you to think about three things this past week that you did for someone or that helped in any way. Just three things. I know there's lots more, but think of three. Now, Take those three and multiply them by every person in this room. And then not only those three, but multiply them by all the different simple acts throughout the week. Imagine what the world would have been like this last week if none of these things that we've just thought about had been done. Now, what might the world look like next week if we pay attention even more strongly to the needs in front of us and what are small little ways that we can respond with God's love? Simple acts of faith. These everyday, ordinary things are not these things, acts of faith as honorable, God-blessed, and important as the spectacular ones. One modest person who tends to go the extra mile for others, when she was asked where she gets the energy and the determination, she responded, God did not place me on this earth just to take up space. It's not enough just to go along. God wants me to make a difference where I can. That's it. That's what Jesus is saying to his disciples. Just do it. Make a difference where you can. You already have all the faith you need to perform miracles. You just need to be who you are in your community with your eyes and ears wide open. One word of caution, when you feel burned out and weary, make sure you get your rest and some quiet time with God. And maybe find someone else's listening ear at times too. And remember, we are not saved by how hard we work at making a difference. Jesus took care of that on the cross. Salvation is a free gift. So when we read the headlines and we see news of more shootings, more injustice, more war, more hatred and division in our country and world, it can seem like there's no hope. Yet, all around us are signs of hope, of God continuing to love and to care for this world. And what you, what we do on a daily basis, it makes a difference in our world. The simple, ordinary, even mundane acts of faithfulness each day. Your faith is more than adequate to the tasks at hand, no matter how you feel about it. Why is our faith enough? Simply because our faith resides in the one who holds the whole world in his hands. The one who poured out his life for you on the cross. The one who said, Have no fear, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Have no fear, little flock. Amen.
Once again, as you're able, we'd ask that you please rise and join with us as we sing together, Rock of My Salvation. The service of holy baptism, if you'd like to follow along, is on page 227 in the front of the hymnal. So in baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we're reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. So living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Sponsors? All right, so called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God. So parents, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? If so, answer, I do. So as you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with responsibilities. 
to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the scriptures, and to nurture him in faith and prayer, so that Miles may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. It's a big list. So do you promise, to the best of your ability, to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, I do. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture Miles in the Christian faith as you're empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, answer, we do. And people of God, do you promise to support Miles and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. I invite everyone who's here, and you can remain seated. So I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and, the con and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. And through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you, Lord, be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay. So, Miles, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was surprised you weren't planning on your head wash today, were you? <laughs> yeah. Here we go. So, we give an ally. So, um, Miles, you belong to Christ in whom you've been baptized. Alleluia. So, um, for the laying of, of hands, for, uh, we pray for the Holy Spirit, for Miles. I think everybody ought to be involved in that. And I didn't warn you about this, but I want you to come with me. So follow me. Everybody else come too. Okay, so come on. Everybody stand up. 
And、uh, I don't know if you were here with Pastor Paul last week, but we did a human chain throughout. So that means you take the shoulder, you know, next to you. So reach out for shoulders, so we can all be together as we pray for God's Spirit for Miles here. So we give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Pour out upon Miles, and fill him with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. So, Miles, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Okay,、um, you guys that way. Everybody else can sit down. <laughs> so this candle and candle holder is for to be lit on anniversaries of this day for Miles.、Uh, the candle holder was handmade by someone in the congregation, and I give this. Candle to the parents to hold for Miles until he can hold it and light it, and with these words from Christ. So Miles, let your light show so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. All right. So now let us welcome Miles Royal with one voice. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. So let us welcome Miles, as newest member of Calvary. And there is, so you guys can. There's for everybody here. You can take care of those. There's for the candle, and then over here, there is a quilt and a banner. These are really cool. So, there we go. So we're very thankful for those gifts too. So there you are. Thank you. All right. So、uh, let's pray, and then we'll do sharing of the peace. So just hang out. So, dear Lord. We give you great thanks for the gift of baptism for this young child. Be with him and、uh, parents and sponsors and family and friends and community and in raising this child as a as your child, Lord, to be full of faith and of、uh, love and grace for your world, that that might flow through his life. Lord, we pray for our whole world for your healing power, especially those that we name in our hearts at this time who need your healing. Lord, increase our faith. Help us trust that you've done all necessary, that we might see our daily activities in ways that are a blessing to others. Guide us, Lord, in all we do. In your name, we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace with one another.
lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering, Lord, use our voices, Lord, use our hands, Lord, use our lives, they are yours, we are an offering. Let us pray. God, our provider, we bring nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it except the gifts you've first given us, which we bring to your table, and with them the offering of our lives. Nourish us now with the life that really is life revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them. All are welcome to come and take your place at the feast. So we will be uh, using intinction, which means, so yeah, I invite the uh, servers to come forward at this time, please. We'll be using intinction, which means you um, keep the bread and dip it into the wine. And also we will be uh, serving continuously. So you'll come down the center and go out the side and we'll serve you in the center there.
Please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and until eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God of blessing, at this table we have seen you face to face and in the gift of Christ's body and blood our hearts have been refreshed. Send us now to shine with your goodness and bear witness to the one we've received Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Go in peace and serve the
Let your life shine out in the world. Let your life shine out in the world. Christ is calling you to follow Him. Christ is calling you to follow Him. Make your lives a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. Go in peace and serve the Lord. your life shine out in the world. Let your life shine out in the world. Christ is calling you to follow Him. Christ is calling you to follow Him. Make your lives a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. Go in peace and serve the Serve the Lord. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Go in peace and serve the Lord.